Hello, welcome, and thanks for joining us on this edition of News 2. I'm Sandra Manson. Topic on newscast tonight, the Committee of the Whole continued getting testimony Friday on pension reform. The discussions began earlier this week on St. Thomas before moving to St. Croix today. News 2's Erica Parsons has that story. GERS officials came prepared to talk about issues raised in Senate hearings earlier this week. Retirement Administrator Austin Nibbs clarified questions dealing with the alternative investment program, missing contributions, pension payments, and administrative costs. Officials have said because of the unfunded liability, the retirement system will collapse in eight years. So lawmakers have been trying to collect information to help draft a bill that would fix the system. There is current legislation by the governor to implement recommendations made by a retirement task force. Those suggestions include reducing members' benefits by 10 percent, which neither NIBS nor retirees or lawmakers support. 10 percent reduction would be absolutely devastating. It would be the difference between getting to eat or buy their medication that month versus, versus not. Senator Narita O'Reilly said suspending the cost of living adjustment for three years and reducing retirees' benefits actually hurt the economy, but the actuary accompanying NIBS questioned where the money would come from without reducing these things. If you do nothing in eight or ten years, you will have the money coming into the system to pay roughly 35 to 40 percent of the benefits every year that are due. So you won't have any money to pay for the benefits except the cash flow that's coming in. And, that, and that's what we wanted to avoid. Missing contributions from the government in past decades have contributed to retirement being upside down with more going out than coming in. And one senator suggested adding more membership. We've spoken for years to go from the GRS government employee retirement system to the Virgin Islands employee retirement system where you allow private employers and employees to participate. We talked about that there is a private plan that has come under by the NCPERS and it's being tested in California. We're waiting to see how that rolls out in California to see if it's something that we could bring to the Virgin no, no, Islands. Actually. Erica Parsons, News 2. Oh, Administrator Nibs said he told senators his goal is to reduce some of the administrative costs and he plans to do that by looking into solar to reduce their energy costs that top $1 million. Governor John P. Young Jr. convened a meeting of the Board of Directors of the Virgin Islands Next Generation Network, or VINGN, recently. The board discussed several matters, including the recent annual program site visit by the Broadband Technology Opportunities Program team from the U.S. Department of Commerce and the status of implementation of each of VINGN's federally funded broadband programs, including its free digital literacy training programs, its offering of access to free public computer centers on St. Croix and St. Thomas, and plans to open PCCs on St. John to the general public. It's built out of a 100% fiber optic open access network. It was all updates. The Caribbean Electric Utility Services Corporation, or CARELEC, will hold its 2014 Chief Executive Officers and Corporate Communications Symposium on St. Thomas from May 18th to 21st. Now, this year's conference celebrates two milestones, the 25th anniversary of the establishment of CARELEC and the 50th anniversary of the Virgin Islands Water and Power Authority. The theme of the conference, Powering and Empowering the Caribbean, is well set against the Carolic anniversary theme of embracing the Caribbean energy revolution and WAPA's anniversary theme, a promising future flowing with powerful ideas. Carolic utilities, though primarily in the business of providing reliable electricity, also see themselves as one of the key players in economic sustainability, and as such, they are constantly improving, exploring alternative and sustainable forms of generation while engaging their societies in the efficient use of produced power. WAPA, of course, is the host of this year's Carolite Conference. Crime prevention is up to all of us. If you know something, say something, make sure no crime goes unsolved. And remember, all, even the smallest bit of information may be just what law enforcement needs to solve the following cases. Here's this week's Crime Stoppers report. On St. John, police received a report on May 2nd about 10.45 p.m. from a female stating that she had been assaulted by a man in the area of downtown Cruz Bay. While on the beach, the suspect walked over to her, used obscenities, punched her in the right shoulder, and pushed her to the ground, according to the police report. The victim kicked him and ran into the water to escape. He fled the area. The male is described as black with a medium build and 
has a beard and mustache. Over in St. Croix, police are asking for help to close a cold case. On Monday, November 5, 2012, about 2 p.m., police were dispatched to East Scenic Road where they discovered an unresponsive male lying in a grassy area. The minor was later identified as 16-year-old Emery Christopher of Estate Mount Pleasant. When found, he was fully dressed, wearing a black shirt, blue jeans, white ankle socks, and black sneakers. He was last seen in the Lorraine Village Mutual Homes housing area. Now on St. Thomas on April 27th at 7 p.m. in the area of Windward Passage Hotel, multiple shots were fired and three male victims sustained gunshot wounds. Police do not know who fired the shots. If you have any information about this, please call Crime Stoppers, call police, step up and tell them what you know. You can call 1-800-222-TIPS. Turn our attention to D.C. This Saturday marks the 60th anniversary of the Supreme Court's landmark decision in Brown v. Board of Education, striking down the establishment of separate public schools for black and white students. The ruling was a turning point in the civil rights movement. But decades later, inequalities in education still persist. Craig Boswell reports from Washington. Attorney General Eric Holder marked the 60th anniversary of Brown versus the Board of Education with the NAACP in Washington. My generation was the first to grow up in a world in which separate but equal was no longer the law of the land. But 60 years later, many American schools aren't well integrated. In New York, Illinois, Maryland, and Michigan, more than half the state's black students attend schools which have 90% or more minority enrollment. And the same is true for Latino students in New York, California, and Texas. I take them back to Brown. Clarence Humes is the principal of John Philip Sousa Middle School. The Southeast D.C. school was at the center of the desegregation fight after black children were denied admission to the once all-white school. Today, nearly all the students are black. I think as a 99% uh, uh, black school, mm -hmm. does that qualify as being a segregated school? Well, what I would say is no. Uh, due to the fact that we are a neighborhood school. Experts well, say going forward, way. diversifying neighborhoods is key. If the objective is to desegregate schools, it really does start with desegregating neighborhoods. And there are other challenges too, like getting more money and resources to schools that serve minority neighborhoods. Craig Boswell, CBS News, Washington. Keeping our eye on the economy, employers are hiring at their fastest pace in more than two years, and last month, unemployment rates fell in almost every state in the U.S. The Labor Department says half the states now have an unemployment rate of 6% or lower. Here's the New York Stock Exchange with our stock market watch. The Dow, Nasdaq, S&P all up. The Dow 44, Nasdaq 21, S&P 7. Coming up on News 2, according to some other statistics, this time released by the U.S. Coast Guards, the Virgin Islands has the lowest fatality rate in 2013 for recreational boating. Safe Boating Week starts on Saturday and you can learn some more. Well, according to statistics released by the U.S. Coast Guards, the Virgin Islands has the lowest fatality rate in 2013 for recreational boating. With that being said, Safe Boating Week starts on Saturday, May 17th. News to Shanika Robinson has the tales. The U.S. Coast Guard and Coast Guard Auxiliary in Christiansted are promoting National Safe Boating Week, life jackets, and boating safety. The week-long events are geared towards reminding boaters and informing the community about boat safety. Last year, we enjoyed the smallest or the lowest number of fatalities uh, during recreational boating uh, that has been uh, recorded. And I would like to think that that's due to the efforts of, of all these agencies to promote safe boating, to teach safe boating. A few key reminders in regard to safety boating laws will be at the top of the agenda during the week. Make sure you have enough life jackets on board your vessel. Uh, you need to have one life jacket for each person on board and infants and children, they have separate life jackets for them so you need to make sure you're counting those and not as an adult. It is also important to remember that all persons under the age of 17 are required to wear life jackets unless they are inside the cabin. The event for Safety Boating Week kicks off on Saturday, May 17th, when the Sinkroy Yacht Club will host the Get Set, Wear It, Inflate World event participation at 10 a.m. 
Then from May 19th through the 24th, the Sami the Other Coloring Book Program will be presented to grade school children around the island. On May 24th at the Salt River Marina, from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m., there will be a vessel safety examination and also on Sunday, May 25th at the Green Key Marina. On May 31st, we're going to have another event. We're going to participate in the Vitima Fair that will take place in Frederickstead. The Coast Guard is generously providing us with a cutter, which will be tied up at the Frederickstead Pier and be open for tours. Shiniqua Robinson, News 2. Be sure to mark it on your calendars and participate in the upcoming safe boating events. The annual pinning ceremony for the University of the Virgin Islands nursing class of 2014 was held today on the Albert Sheen campus in St. Croix. Fifteen students will have the honor of wearing the official nursing pin of UVI. Today there will be 14 students pinned. Unfortunately, one of our students passed and she should have been one of the recipients of a pin. There will be 15 total graduating from the program. This is a very unique ceremony that is special for nurses, for nursing students entering the nursing profession. Each nursing school has its own pin and people cannot be identified about where they went to nursing by what the pin looks like. So the pinning ceremony is that honoring entering the profession. Congratulations to all the nurses. The 13th annual Relay for Life on St. Croix is taking place from Saturday, May 17th through Sunday, May 18th on the track at the Educational Complex. This year's theme is Fight to the Finish. All are we are one. Teams that have signed up will participate in the 20-hour trek around the track, which symbolizes that cancer does not sleep and those who are fighting against it will do so without taking a break. Relay for Life begins at 2 p.m. on May 17th and ends at 10 a.m. the following day. Be sure to count on two to bring you all the highlights. Youth representing several Caribbean islands will have an opportunity to demonstrate their knowledge of the Bible. As the North Caribbean Conference of Seven-Day Adventists, based on St. Croix, in collaboration with the Adventist Youth Coordinating Council, they're hosting the third Bible boom. Now delegates representing the islands of Anguilla, Tortola, Virgin Gorda, St. Croix, St. Thomas, St. John, St. Martin, St. Eustatius, and Seba will meet on St. Thomas to test their knowledge. The Bible boom will be held on Saturday, May 17th, beginning at 4 p.m. at the Philadelphia Seventh-day Adventist Church on Rapoon Hill. The Bible boom will be conducted electronically, and participants and the audience will have an opportunity to view each answers from a large screen. The weekend of events actually begins this evening, Friday, May 16th, with the opening ceremony parade of nations and youth groups. That's at 7 p.m. tonight. A presentation by the award-winning Combined Harmonic Rays and Hawks Unity Choir. They're back from London. will be performing Saturday, May 17th during a worship celebration that begins at 9 a.m. at the city Seventh-day Adventist Church on Seventh-day Street, drawn against Gata. That's just a few of all the events. The St. Croix Central High School class of 1974 will be celebrating 40 years this year. And they're, on, they're hosting and honoring a recognition dinner and dance Saturday at the Palms. And they're honoring nine trailblazers in education. The fundraiser will also benefit Central High's 2014 class. We are doing it because we want to provide a scholarship to the graduating class of 2014. At the same time, we have some trailblazers in our class. These are um, was our teachers. We will be, of course, um, honoring them. People like Dean Hodge, people like uh, Maria Schuster, Ulrich Benjamin who was a principal at that time, um, Mr. Um, Doreen Rogers, Regina Williams, Otis X, Albert Schuster, uh, Mrs. Claire Marshall, and of course, um, the one and only great Mr. Noel Blakey. What a great honor. Congratulations to all of the honorees. Well, cocktails start at 6 p.m. and the dinner dance is at 7 p.m. at the Palms at Pelican Cove. Tickets are $50 to support this scholarship fundraiser. Well, be sure to stick around. Your news to AccuWeather forecast is coming up next.